And just like that, the 740 Zone season has come to a conclusion. It is our finale episode here, and we had a lot to cover as Saturday night had some regional final games for you. I'm your host, Jacob Murray. It's the 740 Zone for the last time starts right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the 740 Zone. Of course, as I said earlier, I am your host, Jacob Murray. We have a very sunny and hot November Sunday morning for you here. Where we had all the recaps from the Saturday night action. We start off in St. Clairsville, where Bloom Carroll traveled out, and we had reporter Brian Kerb at that game. And, you know, the Red Devils really struggled to defend their home turf, didn't they? Oh, yeah, for sure. The Bulldogs are mostly known for their dangerous defense, but on Saturday, their offense was just as lethal, and they couldn't have asked for a better start to this one. On the opening kickoff, Bo Wisecarver fields the kick, fakes the pitch to the other return, and even fooling out our camera guy a bit. Then Wisecarver turns on the afterburners and goes all the way. 93 yards to the end zone puts Bloom Carroll up just 16 seconds in. On St. Clairsville's opening drive, Tyler Tonkovich airs one out, but Drew Angelo picks it off. The Bulldogs secondary has been giving opposing quarterbacks nightmares all season long. Yeah, and when you're facing a defense like Bloom Carroll's, you definitely want to limit your mistakes and keep the Bulldogs offense off the scoreboard. Right, and the Red Devils simply could not stop the Bulldogs offense in the first half. Later in the quarter, K.J. Benedict finds Hobie Scarberry across the middle and get out of his way. Scarberry completely steamrolls the defender to bust into the end zone, making it 14 to nothing. Still in the first, Scarberry takes the direct snap, finds a little bit of space, and he will win that 30-yard foot race to the end zone. 21-0, Bloom Carroll is rolling. Now with St. Clairsville down big early, the Red Devils could not afford to turn the ball over anymore. Yeah, and it's not easy to play turnover free against Bloom Carroll. Tonkovich lets it rip here, but Chase Plants comes up with the interception, and the Bulldogs come away with another turnover. And getting points off of turnovers is Bloom Carroll's specialty. Scarberry gets the direct snap again and pushes his way across the plane. Can't really see it here, but he's in. 28-0 Bulldogs at the half, and the Bloom Carroll faithful is loving it. Now in the third, Scarberry gets the handoff, and there is no stopping Hobie this time as well. His fourth score of the night, 137 all-purpose yards for Scarberry on the night. Bloom Carroll up 34-0, leading to the mercy roll. Now Bloom Carroll has only allowed 34 points all season long, and leading by 40 points late, the Bulldogs defense never let up. No, they did not. St. Clairsville actually had the ball inside the five, but Bloom Carroll makes four straight stops to clinch the shutout. And how about them Bulldogs? Knocking off the one seed, winning their first ever regional title and advancing to the state final four. It feels great, man. The offensive line came out doing an outstanding job. Holes where I could drive a truck for half of them. Just let me have one heck of a game. Uh, these kids deserve it. Um, you know, we had, a, we had a Zoom meeting at the beginning of the year talking about all the protocols, all the things we're going to have to do different. Um, we, we haven't been hanging out with each other after practice. We haven't had team meetings in a classroom. We haven't seen each other's face uh, since football season started. Um, but I, I told our kids at the beginning, if we can do all that right, um, then the football field stuff comes easy because that, that stuff's the tough stuff to buy into. It's a tough thing to do the right way. And since our kids, from the beginning, they've been doing that for us. Um, and it's paid off on the field with, with great plays, you know, detailed plays, fundamental plays, um, and then just playing with each other. Bloom Carroll will continue its state title quest as they move on now into the Final Four and look to move on to that state final, of course, when they play Lake Catholic next week. Thanks for the good work, Brian. Now we head over to a top matchup in Division 5 as we had Ironton take on Ridgewood and we had reporter Ryan Kincaid out at this one to see a battle of the Titans in Division 5. Are you ready for some football? It speaks for itself, doesn't it? Regional title on the line, Ironton versus Ridgewood, one versus two. Ironton starts the night off through the air. Tayden Carpenter finds Kyle Howell on the outside. He has room to run. He's down the sideline to the 30, finally knocked out of bounds inside the 20. Carpenter again tosses the rock, this time to Ashlyn Duncan, which sets up the bulldozer known as Reed Carrico to punch into the end zone for the first Ironton touchdown. Ridgewood fumbles the ensuing kickoff, allowing Carpenter to try again through the air. But look out, here's Dalton Patterson with the pick. Generals get the ball back, what can they do with it? Javon Belt is the new man under center. He fires to the sideline and finds Keegan Millender inbounds, setting up Deontay Brandon for a rush through the middle to even the score. 
Despite being down star quarterback Gabe Tingle, the Richmond Generals took a 7-7 tie into the half, and they looked like they had a chance to upset the number one Fighting Tigers. And the traveling fans were hyped up for the third quarter, but Carrico came alive to silence them, rumbling nearly the length of the field to post Ironton's go-ahead touchdown, and they would not look back. A last-minute field goal was sealed the deal 17-7. The players to watch for the Fighting Tigers tonight were Trevor Carter and Trent Hacker. No, 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 Trevor, Trevor's a talented, talented kid, but uh, people don't know he's been a little banged up here and there, so, uh, you know, it was just a matter of, uh, you know, we knew if we could get, get him to the second half, we, uh, we knew we had, we had plenty enough to think for that, and we knew that they'd be a little bit worn down than they were, and I mean, Trevor's a phenomenal talent. You know, we've, we've been through so many ups and downs uh, through our whole four years here at Ironton, and it's just been uh, a great experience knowing that last year we got to stay, but we didn't finish. So this year, like, our motto is finish the job. So knowing that our experience that we have and, like, the bond that we all have on defense and offense and the special teams, it's just a great feeling and a great atmosphere to be a part of. The Ironton Fighting Tigers are Region 19 champs for the second straight year. They anticipate Roger Bacon out of Cincinnati for their final four matchup. With this win for Ironton, they now move on to take on Roger Bacon in the final four. Early a matchup of two of the top running backs in the state of Ohio. Thanks for the good work, Ryan. Now we head over to Beverly, where we saw the Fort Fry Cadets take on the Fairland Dragons in a one versus three seed matchup. Reporter Joe Collins and I were out at this one, and look, from the opening kickoff, the Cadets dominated the Dragons here in this one. Yes, they did. And the Cadets are known for two things, their dominant run game and their stifling defense. And both of them were on display when they took on Fairland Saturday night. The Cadets could not have asked for a better start as their run game was firing on all cylinders in the first, including this 38-yard carry by Brian Atkins. Atkins finished off the drive by getting flipped in the end zone to make it 7-0. 14-0 and a little later in the corner, Orrin Brown receives the handoff on the end around, pushes his lead blocker into the defender, and will dash ahead and win the race to the end zone. 21-0 in the first quarter. The Cadets would end up having 354 yards on the ground throughout the game. Now the offense seemed to be running very smoothly, but what can you say about the defensive effort by the Cadets? If there was one word to describe the Cadets' defense this game, smothering. The Cadets' defense allowed just seven points on the night, and that was because of a 69-yard touchdown pass in the second quarter. Other than that, Fairland crossed the 50-yard line just two other times in the game, and the Cadets' defense forced multiple turnovers and had all of the Dragons' playmakers in check. Yeah, the Cadets controlled this game right from the get-go, but they've been doing this for the entire playoffs, it seems like. To say the Cadets dominated Region 23 would be an understatement. In four playoff games, the Cadets outscored their opponents 176-19. to That's an average score of 44-5. to Their smallest margin of victory was their 34-0 win against Barnesville the week before. With the 47-7 victory over Fairland, Fort Fry convincingly clinches Region 23 and moves on to the Final Four for the second time in three years. Uh, they're a special group. Um, they've uh, they've been at this. You know, they were in the regional uh, championship game two years ago. Um, just about all of them were on the field in some capacity or another. So they've been here before, and uh, they really wanted to get back here this year. And, and they worked uh, about as hard as any team I've ever coached to get here. And they're definitely a special group. As I had mentioned earlier on, the Fort Fry Cadets move on to the Final Four, where they will take on Springfield at Zanesville High School next week. It's the good work, Joe. And now, our final goodbyes for our final episode. I would just like to give a quick thank you shout out to all the communities and high schools that have allowed the 740 Zone to roam your sidelines and cover your games during this very interesting 2020 season. I'd like to give a shout out to our seniors here at the 740 Zone and reporters Ryan Kincaid, Sam Wiesneth, Nick Henthorne and also myself, all seniors this year. And we were just glad to be out and cover Southeastern Ohio football one last time. And of course, I'd like to give a big final shout out to all of our staff and also our producer, Michael Roth, who none of this would have been possible if he wasn't out there on the front lines looking for the games and sending us out and getting all the equipment set up to cover your high schools throughout this entire 2020 season. And like I said, for the final time, I'm your host, Jacob Murray, signing off. Roll the credits. Harrison Central, Kobe Mitchell is a special playmaker. I got the coaching quarterback are not too worried about it, and they are keen on that next man up. Pure domination for Medina right from the get-go as they set the tone very early and control. Keep this team in the game. 
looking for Zeke Brown, who mosses his defender. Successful is not only due to their explosiveness on the field in the run game, but also there's a history of Vikings victories. You gotta go all the way back to 2012 to find the last time. The decisive play of the game. Always keeping Willisburg three points ahead of Bishop Reedy. Rust, but I tell you, the Bulldogs put absolutely no rust on Saturday. They were eager to get back. Austin's offense came out and punched Fort Fry's defense in the mouth early on. But the cadets responded. Trimble Tomcats, they find themselves in a similar position, looking to compete. For Coming out of the halftime locker room, the Scotties had a whole nother attitude. And that was halftime, it could have gone either way. But Jackson came out firing. On the two-yard line, Nene is scoring to send this game into triple end had success early this season. They know that playoff competition is going to start. Despite Ridgewood's prolific offense, the Pirates just couldn't get it done of their 10.